Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Talk About Colouring. This is my 10 week course on colouring your stamped images using Stamping Up products. My name is Tatiana and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator in Australia. Everything I show you I sell in my online store so if you have any questions feel free to ask because I love sharing what I do. I love sharing with people and I really, really, really love colouring and I love that there is so many wonderful options out there with Stamping Up products and what's really awesome is that they all coordinate. The colours coordinate and so you can get different looks using the exact same colours, the exact same stamp set but different mediums and that is exactly what this course is all about. Thank you so much for your patience last week. I was feeling horrible and there was no way I could do it alive. And again, yesterday I was at a PNF meeting, so I couldn't do it. So thank you so much for joining me tonight on my not quite regularly scheduled night. So this is lesson three and we'll be looking at coloring in pencils. So lesson one, we stamped the color on. We've been using a stamp set called to a wild rose which gives us a lot of flexibility in how we color because it gives you the option to stamp the color and to color in with all our wonderful mediums so lesson one was stamping lesson two we use the ink pad and ink refills to color in the flowers and today lesson three we'll be using coloring in pencils no more chat from me here let's head to the craft desk and see what it's all about these are the coloring in pencils that Stamping Up has. There's two different sets. These are the original set and they come in 11 different colors. They're listed here on the back. Real Red, Calypso Coral, Pumpkin Pie, Daffodil Delight, Old Olive, Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point, Rich Razzleberry, Melon Mambo, Early Espresso, Basic Grey, Basic Black and Whisper White. Ooh, mouthful. And then the second release of pencils which were a limited time edition last year and this year they have come into the annual catalogue and they've added the Cherry Cobbler, Flirty Flamingo, Cajun Craze, Crushed Curry, Granny Apple Green, Garden Green, Coastal Cabana, Blarney Blue, Knight of Navy and Gorgeous Grape. And as I have in previous weeks, I've cross-referenced all the different colouring mediums of Stamping Up and found three colours that we are able to use in all the different mediums and we will be using Bermuda Bay, Granny Apple Green and Daffodil Delight. And as in the previous weeks, we are using To A Wild Rose. I've stamped pre-cut everything. There's a matching die set to this. And I've even started coloring just so that you're not sitting around watching me color all night. I want this to be quick, fun, educational and showing you how easy. Now, colouring in pencils, these are water colouring pencils, but tonight we're going to be using them as simple plain colouring pencils. The only difference you would find between these and regular colouring pencils would be because of the water feature or the water colouring feature of them, their lead, well it's technically not lead, their colour is softer. Um, and I actually really like that. It means that you're not going to get harsh lines when you colour and it also just allows you to build. Now any colour pencils you can build a colour on top. I'm sticking to the same colours as I have previous week and I've started. The thing to take note with pencils is that you do see the direction that you have coloured. I think I'm just going to lower the camera because you will want to be able to see what I'm doing there. Okay, so if I pick up my piece, there we go, you can see, hopefully, yes, there, you can see the stroke lines of the colouring pencil. And you've got to be aware of that when you're using colouring pencils so that they're not going. So if I was to colour sideways along that petal, it wouldn't look as good as following the natural petal lines. And that is my biggest tip. My other biggest tip is press lightly because you can keep adding color. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm coloring, I'm going back and forth and I'm adding color to that petal. 
in the direction that I want. And then I start pressing a bit harder and add more color to the bottom area of that petal, adding that shading basically. And around those little stamped markings, I'm doing more. And that's pretty much it. So light pressure, more pressure and keep going over. You can keep going light pressure and you will build the color. But by adding some extra pressure, you do build that color more quickly, which is nice. And I, I tend to find like a little sweet spot in the coloring pencil where it has like a nice big flat surface. And then you'll be able to color larger surfaces. Hey Judy, no, no need to apologize. Thanks for joining. We are looking at coloring pencils. And that is that, as they say. Uh, let's put the card together. I've already prepped the bases. And let me just double check. I'm doing the same layout each week so that we can compare. So we're doing the Bermuda Bay at the top here. And Granny Apple Green. For the consistency. And I did the same technique here on the leaves. I'll bring them up closer so you can see. So I've colored in darker in, along the stem line there than compared to the leaf. Add just that tad bit of glue. those are joining thank you so much for joining me I am an independent stamping up demonstrator and I love sharing what I do with my fellow humans really with anyone who would like to listen Chrissy says lovely I only use coloring pencils fantastic Chrissy what is it about coloring pencils that you like most let me know I'd love to hear about it and then the flower I like I've been using the stamping dimensionals. So as a stamping up demonstrator, I like to inspire people to be creative. It is a wonderful pastime. It brings joy by creating, and then you bring joy to others by sharing what you create. And I am primarily making cards because they're easy to send in the mail. And there's our first card. Now the color is less intense compared to our previous weeks. Let's bring in those cards Ooh. so if I bring in this was our oh, no, wrong one. this was the first card we did in this series it's stamped color and if I compare it to tonight's card using the coloring pencil you can see the color is less intense but if I wanted it to be more intense I could make it more intense by continually adding another layer. I would do that carefully and just slowly add the color and the layer. Judy, you asked, what do I use, um, what did you use for the stamped leaves on the card? I've used the exact same stamp. This is um, Smoky Slate color and I stamped it in Smoky Slate. If you watch less than one from the video, you'll see me put together the card. I'm not repeating it each week. It's a 10 week course. This is a free 10 week course on coloring and I don't want to be heating the stamping process. So I'm trying to prep beforehand. And the idea is that we can compare. Yes, Chrissy, it's a much softer image. It's like painting, but not so messy. Yes, that is right. Coloring pencils are like painting and but less messy and what's great about these is because they are watercolor we will be able to use them a bit like paint which we'll do next week and then we had last week's cards so I'm bringing these all in last week's cards we used the ink we'll put that aside we used ink and we used aqua paper a painter and we also used the stamping blender what it's called a stamp a blender pen to add the color so again because these are using inks these colors are more intense than the pencil 
but it just gives you different looks and varieties of ways. Let's move on to my second example tonight. All the examples I've been doing in this course have been stamped in black as well as the coordinating colour of um, ink. And for this example, hey Rosaline, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you can see. I wanted to do something a little bit different because we're not adding the water to the water colouring pencils. Hey Wendy, I wanted to show you that you can get a bit of visual texture using pencils. And I've kind of created this cross hatched pattern. You can see it more on the flower if I bring it up nice and close. There we go. You can see that cross hatching. Now that's something cool and fun that you can do with pencils that you can't do with inks. It just won't show up. I do use the inks to color too. Oh, they are lovely to color. Now the key with the cross hatching is to have a sharp tip. You're not going to get the same results without sharpening. So I've got just, I got this from Officeworks. I like this one because it has the two holes so I can use it with the kids coloring pencils as well and that it collects the rubbish. And I'm just going to twist it in there. And the key with sharpening I find is that you just do a little bit at a time, bring it out, check it and then do some more. Now, if your pencil breaks during the sharpening process, there could be two reasons for that. One is that your sharpener isn't particularly good. And the second reason is that the pencil has been dropped and it has breaks in it. Um, that particularly happens when you find that the pencil tip breaks as you're sharpening it. So that means that the lead, the color within the cap in the pencil does break. And so when you sharpen it, it reveals that break. So cheat your pencils gently, people. And cross hatching. So what I'm doing is I'm just flicking in one direction. And then to get the darker color, I flick in the other. I'm trying to keep the pressure the same. And in the areas that I want it to be darker, I go over a few times. Now this is, there is many ways to use coloring pencils. This is just two examples tonight. It's ones that I enjoy doing. And oh, see, I must have dropped that pencil at some point and that's why it has broken. We have moved and who knows how those moving boxes get moved. Got a great tip on that now. I've got a nice sharp tip and I'm gonna take advantage of that tip and cross hatch. So when you're doing cross hatching, you do want a sharp edge and what you can do is continually sharpen your pencil because as you press and the more pressure you get press, use you will ruin the tip but I tend to rotate the pencil and find the sharp little point you like that technique excellent it's a really fun one it's something different and I like the texture the visual texture it is better on larger objects compared to smaller ones so it's been harder to cross hatch what I probably should have done on these I might add that in is to cross hatch more at the bottom of each leaf then along the stem line I'll just add that in it's something really fun so what I'll do is I'll go in and that's any technique with the pencils that I'm showing tonight what's great about them is that you can continuously add I might sharpen that up a bit more oh yes thank you Wendy I am just using the regular whisper white not the thick oh you need to get the <laughs> Megan, how can you not have the pencils already? I'm kind of surprised. So that, I think that looks better than trying to. So you've got to really think about the shape you are um, coloring. I tried cross hatching right just along the stem line, making that darker area 
where the stems were but that wasn't as obvious because it's a smaller area but by adding that cross hashing just at the point where these leaves meet the stem gives them that darker area. You have blends. I have to admit the blends are one of my favorite coloring mediums and oh let me see I've got a schedule for these this course uh, next week we're looking at the coloring pencils again with adding a uh, water or uh, all the blends we'll be using both the aqua painter and the blender pen and then the week after we'll be doing stamping blends so there's future tip bits and I'll bring in my pre-prepared card base. Oh, I have the Derwins too, Megan. Oh, uh, sorry, Chrissy. I am. Um, I did at one point have like a really ancient box of Der Derwent pencils. Um, geez, my parents had it. It's it was cardboard, not the tins that they come in now. It was. Oh, I can't find them. It's probably. I'm guessing they're still at my parents' house. <laughs> I'm hoping they're still at my parents' house. I'm kind of regretting that I did use them. They would be a bit of a collector's item now. But I guess my parents didn't mind me using them, so can't really complain. And again, the stamping dimensionals. Now, if you really do enjoy crafting, and paper crafting particularly, I would love to chat to you some more, because I think you may enjoy becoming a Stamping Up demonstrator. There is a community out there, out here, across Australia and the world with us demonstrators and we just love meeting new people to craft with. So there we go. Let's bring in so two different looks with the stamped image being in black as well as the coordinating colours and, and different techniques. But both techniques, if I bring them in ooh, like that, both techniques you can see the direction the texture of the pencil and that is something unique to pencils and that is tonight's episode or lesson as I should say of talking about color please leave comments and let me know what you liked and what you just didn't like or what you would like to know more about and next week we'll take a further look of the coloring pencils and explore their because these are watercolour pencils, so we'll explore that feature of them. And I will be airing that one on the Monday night at 8pm, my usual time. If you feel like more crafty inspiration, join me tomorrow at 10am Australian Eastern Standard Time for some crafty inspiration using the new uh, Christmas Rose stamp set. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.